right, welcome everyone. Welcome back to the Viking Pavilion. I'm Valerie Cleary, the Director of Athletics, and we actually are live streaming this as well. So um, to all those that are tuning in, thank you for tuning in. But I can't tell you uh, just how exciting it is just to have our friends and Viking family back in the building, back on the park blocks, and we dialed up the sunshine just for this event. But what a year it has been for all of us. Um, I think over the past year, for, for each and every one of us, I think this year has really caused us, uh, led us to reflect on what truly matters in our lives. And whether that's more quality time with our family, we have lots of babies running around, so lots more quality time. Um, but also just for us here in our department of really reflecting on what matters most to us. And that's our student athletes that are here. We have uh, members of our men's and women's basketball team here, so thanks for coming, guys and gals. But then our staff as well is our Viking family, and it's so nice to see some of your faces here. But it's funny, just last night, I know you're gonna think I'm way behind, but I finally finished reading Shoe Dog. In all my time, I read like one page at a time, but I got to the very end of the book last night. And Phil, we're gonna go on a first name basis here, Phil was talking to me. And in, the, in that book, he, he talks about how it's never just business. And I think when we went through this search, what really came apparent to us when we were looking for our new men's and women's basketball coach is it's never just about business and what we do. It's about us as a Viking family. And that's really what has led us here today to officially welcome two current family members into elevated roles within our department. And that's to introduce our new head women's basketball coach, Chelsea Gregg. and our new head men's basketball coach, Jace Coburn. It's almost like we rehearsed that. So today we get the pleasure of introducing to you two folks that have been with our department for many years, but you get to see them now in a different light as head coaches. We're gonna start with Coach Chelsea Gregg, and then we'll move on to Coach Coburn. Uh, we will have the opportunity for you all to ask any questions, so members of the media and also our Viking family. There's a mic right there in front of me at center court in between those two uh, speakers. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to come up and ask questions. But we're going to start with Coach Greg. Hold on, I'm going to talk you up, girl. I put heels on for you today. So this is, um, and I'm going to try to get through this without getting emotional, so I'm going to have to look like straight empty seat here. But Coach Greg came to our department with our former head coach, Lynn Kennedy. She's in her first year, well, during her first year as an associate head coach, she's been here now over six years, she helped to win our Big Sky Championship. From the moment she came in, I have a personal bias against the, the young women in our, in our office. I always want to help cultivate them into fantastic leaders. And I lobbed on to Coach Greg from when I, when I returned back to the park blocks. And every single time that there was something that came up about up and coming head coaches in the field of women's basketball, I would run down to her office, I would shoot her a text and say, I think you should do this. You are going to be a great head coach someday. And she gladly would oblige and work up her statements and all those kind of good things. And she quickly developed. This is going to be her first time as a head coach. Before joining the Vikings, she served with Coach Kennedy's staff at Southern Oregon, where she was a player for Kennedy as well. And from 2005 to 2008, she also coached as an assistant at the University of Great Falls in Montana, her home state, which is now the University of Providence, for four seasons in between her time as a player and a coach at Southern Oregon. But as I had mentioned, this is a family affair for us. I'm gonna point them out back there. Off the court and on the court, it truly is a family affair for the Greggs. A lot of you know that Keaton Gregg is also one of our assistant coaches. And now we have Oliver and his beloved Elmo as part of our true Viking family here. So it's never just about business. It's about who we are on the court and off the court. Without further ado, I want to introduce you to 
our next head women's basketball coach, Chelsea Gregg. What a moment, man. One that I've thought about for a really long time, that I've worked really hard for. Um, so just taking it all in for a second. Yeah, first off, I'd like to thank President Percy and Valerie Cleary. Um, thank you for your leadership throughout this year, this COVID year, um, from all the protocol meetings through everything behind the scenes that we didn't see to make our season possible. I uh, really appreciate that leadership and just so thankful that we were able to compete this year. Um, also, thank you for that professional development. I really feel like it has prepared me for this moment. Um, and I just, her willingness to put me up for those opportunities, I just really appreciate it. Um, just really invaluable development um, as a coach and as a person. To the committee, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, what a whirlwind the last two weeks has been. Um, so thank you for dropping seemingly everything to make this happen. I can't imagine um, the time, energy, and effort, all the hours that went into the search. Um, and just to do two simultaneously. So I thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, also thank you, Coach Kennedy, uh, for 17 years of your mentorship. Um, as a player and as a coach, we were able to win three championships at three different universities. Um, and so thankful that six years ago that he believed in me, asked me to join his staff and be a part of this incredible university at Portland State. I'm forever thankful for that, that opportunity and the foundation, the championship foundation that he laid these last six years. Uh, to my current and former players, thank you for your commitment and dedication to this program. It's unmatched. Um, it's just so special to be here, the opportunity to coach you. You all represent our university so well. So thank you. I can't wait to get back to work. And thank you to our boosters and all the Viking fans. Man, we missed you. It was not the same. It, we, I know we weren't alone, but at times it felt like it. This empty pavilion. Um, it just wasn't the same. Thank you to those that were able to stop by for the few games that you were able to catch, but we look forward to having you back, um, hopefully this winter. And thank you for all the support, support along the way. I know um, these young women feel that as well, so thank you so much. And lastly, I'd like to thank my family. None of this is possible without them. Um, their grandparents are big, <laughs> being uh, babysitters on the road at home, stepping up uh, for whenever we need them, recruiting. Whatever it is, I truly appreciate the support throughout the years and couldn't do it without them. Uh, what you can expect from Portland State women's basketball, okay? It is my job to create a great environment, student athlete first, a great student athlete experience. And their four years here, they will become the best person, best student, best player. And really preparing them for those next 40 years. I truly believe that. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Uh, but we're going to have to, there's going to be a lot of hard work involved as well. At the end, it will be worth it. Um, I'm super excited for what that's going to look like. Our team's going to live by the four R's. They're going to be relational. I think that's the foundation of every great program is relationships. Building relationships with each other, staying connected with our community, with other athletes on campus. I think that's a big deal. Okay, we talk to people, not about people. Okay, and you will know women's basketball by how we show up and how we care for each other. We will be resilient. I think they've shown so much resiliency already this year, but the reality is, is we will face more hard times. It may not, hopefully, knock on wood, a pandemic, right? But there will be hard things. They may be injuries. There may be personal things that you have to overcome. Resiliency uh, will be shown on the court, um, and it will be a staple of our program. It's the being comfortable with being uncomfortable and that daily grind. Um, and it will be every, worth every minute. Uh, we will re be reliable, okay? We will do what we say we're gonna do. We mean what we say. Uh, that's just it. You can, be you can depend on us, all right? We won't base our emotions solely on outside influences or if I feel like it today, 
okay? But on the basis that when we don't feel like it, like, feel giving, like we don't feel like giving our best, it's still required and we'll show up. Um, and lastly, we'll stay ready. We stay ready, so we've got to get ready. Okay, ready for whatever life has in store for these young women when they leave these doors, whether it's a professional career overseas plane, whether it's in their career path, whether they want to start a family and an internship, they will be ready with the skills that they um, have been taught in our program throughout sports and Portland State University as a whole. Um, goals for our program real quick, recruiting high character, high energy athletes that match the Viking values. Okay, they will be fearless, determined, proud, and together. 100% graduation rate, so proud to say that that is the case of this year, um, as well as four student athletes this term on the president's list and one on the dean's list. Um, and we're trying to get back to the regular uh, conference championship, y'all. So we're going to be regular season conference champs. I want that consistency. I don't want to just peak at the right time, maybe have a lucky shot. I want to prepare throughout the season so we can return and be Big Sky champs, return back to the NCAA tournament for the third time in school history. Um, again, I want to say how thankful I am for this opportunity. Um, I feel like I had earned it. Y'all did a great search <laughs> and dug deep and, and made me earn it, and I love that. It wasn't something like, well, she's here, so we'll just hand it down, and I appreciate that. You made me work for it, and I, and I love that about this place. Um, I'll leave you with this quote. I left my interview as well. It just has really hit home during these times. It's by Manoush Shavik, the director of the London School of Economics. She says, in the past, jobs were about muscles. Now they're about brains. But in the future, they'll be about the heart. I'm so honored and excited to be leading this program, and you'll see that passion and heart every night out. Thank you. Go Vikes! Okay, so we will uh, take questions right now for Coach Greg, if you have any, just down at the center court at the mic. I thought for sure Rich Korea was going to have a list <laughs> of questions. <laughs> Peggy's like, you had to egg him on, didn't you, Valerie? I knew he would have at least one. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a great question. The transfer portal has just changed the game in our business. I think there's a lot of gray area. We've talked about it as a team, and we had those meetings about it, and there's just a lot of uncertainty. I think there's some players where with the COVID year and the extra um, year of eligibility, at least on the women's side, have found that they don't have a spot on their current team anymore. And so that's why they're in the portal. I think there's also players that are looking for, if, see if the grass is greener on the other side. I'm not, I'm not interested in those players. Um, but there's also grad transfer students or there's players that have, are in the portal that really just need a second chance, a new look, um, something different. And so that's something that we can look at. But I definitely think we need to dive deep. It's not a quick decision on those types of players. Um, but just something that we can utilize as well. A lot of those players have experience. They've played at the college level and could be uh, a great help to us as a team. But it's got to be the right fit. All right, thanks, Rich. Hey, Ryan. Great question. I think that committee was so needed. Um, I think the takeaway is, is that there's so much room for development. I think that's the area that we can continue to improve on. 
I think our support staff has done a great job in giving our student athletes resources for, um, for their success beyond Portland State, whether it's internships, um, whether it's resume building, whether it's career workshops. I think they do a great job. But I know that we've talked about it um, as a team and with our players, especially as they're seniors uh, getting close to graduation. It can be a little scary, a little daunting. It's like, what is that next step? And so I think the takeaway for me is that we just need to do a better job. Um, and even as a staff, we can facilitate those conversations, start to get them connected. Um, but I would love to see if we can move forward and whether that's part of a Viking experience, um, but definitely talk more leadership um, based curriculum. I like that. Absolutely. And, and now you are down here in the Viking Pavilion. What difference does this facility make in both the things you were just talking about, the students' perspective, the uh, recruiting process, and then also like the actual experience here? Yeah, absolutely. And thanks so much. I mean, for, for all the efforts of our teams to for the donations, fundraising, wine and roses, all that hard work to make this possible, what a change. Um, we took pride and we made it our own. We took pride in that, that gym, right? That was ours. Um, but the, having the opportunity to play in something like this, in this pavilion, that's unmatched in our conference, really. Location on the park blocks, accessibility, there's nothing like that in our conference. Um, so it's a big deal in recruiting. Y'all like to play in the pavilion? Yeah, yeah, all right. Uh, I think student athlete experience, um, as the, much as we can get on the main floor throughout the season, it's a big deal. Obviously, this is where we play, so as much time we can get on here is, is awesome, but the reality is, is that it, it has made all the difference. Top-notch facilities always uh, push you to the top, no doubt. All right, if there's no other questions, help me congratulate and welcome Head coach, Chelsea Gregg. The hoop earrings and masks don't work well for me. As coach Gregg was saying, this was a very competitive search. By no means did we feel that it was going to be speaking to the drive, the determination, the grit, and the resiliency of any coaching candidate if a coaching position was ever just handed to someone. So we opened up national searches for both the men's and women's head coaches. We had over 30 very highly qualified candidates on each side. And we conducted at least seven or eight interviews on each side. It was just important to us as a search committee in our department that our folks competed to win, just like the expectation of our student athletes. We want to see the fight and the drive and the resiliency and the passion. And that is exactly what both of these great coaches did. So now moving on to introducing our next head men's basketball coach, Jace Coburn. Coach Coburn has spent his last eight years here on the park blocks. The running joke in our department is that now, and Mike Lund's not here, he's out on a golf course with our women's golf team, is he is one of the longest tenured employees in our department. I think there's only five ahead of him. He has put in blood, sweat, and tears for not only Viking men's basketball, but for Viking athletics as a whole. Coach Coburn is taking over the Viking program as the 14th head coach in the 60-year playing history of Viking basketball. He has played an instrumental role in recruiting high-level talent to Portland State, including top scorers Deshaun Wiggins and Cameron Forte, and also top transfer Kalen Robinson, and many other Arizona prospects, including PSU's all-time leader in assists and steals, Boo Boo Hollandwoods. And again, as I said, this is not just business. Sorry, Lens, I'm going to put you on the spot up there. It is about family. I cannot stress that enough. So right up above you, 
is his lovely wife, Coach Lindsay Megs Coburn, who is also part of our Viking family, and their new eight-week-old baby boy, Kyler. Take a look at that cutie. This is truly a family environment because it takes that family love that you could have a knockdown drag out on the court and love it up the next minute. Coach Coburn has had stops at Howard, Texas, Howard JC in Texas, McClintock High School, Phoenix Junior College, and Corona del Sol High School. All successful stops for him before he came here to Portland State. We are extremely excited for what the future of Viking men's basketball will be under Coach Coburn's leadership and the great talent of our student athletes that we have here. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to our next head men's basketball coach, Jace Coburn. All right. Wow, this is a surreal moment. Um, I've always dreamed of this as a little kid to get to this point, but I've got a lot of thank yous I got to get out. One, um, I want to thank Val Cleary um, for giving me this opportunity, President Percy, the interview committee, um, all the Portland State staff and coaches. Your support throughout this last two weeks has been unbelievable, and I really appreciate it. Um, and then, of course, all the donors for all your support throughout the years. Um, obviously, another really important part, two people that I really need to thank is my wife, Lindsay, and uh, our eight-week-old um, baby boy, Kyler. Um, Lindsay, we've been through a lot. Um, we got married on a basketball court. Um, we had a baby boy, and now I got the job of my dreams, and there's more to come. The next thing on the list is a Big Sky Championship, and that's going to be the next thing. Um, so I appreciate all your support and love. The other thing is, is Kyler, you did a real good job for your dad the other night. On uh, Monday when I interviewed, um, he slept really well on Sunday night. So I, I think he thinks he might get some more toys now or something. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure why, why that worked out the way it did, but thanks, buddy. I'd um, like to thank my mom and dad. Um, They've always been really proud of me. The opportunities that they've given me throughout my life, whether it was going to a Suns game when I was a little kid where I first developed my love for basketball, whether it was um, putting me on different basketball teams or sending me to different camps. Um, I wouldn't be here without my parents and all the opportunities that they gave me when I was growing up. The guys know this. Um, I come from a unique situation. Um, my parents own a karate school, so I grew up in a dojo. And that's where I developed my spirit and my competitive fire. And it's one thing to grow up um, with having one fighter raise you, but I had two fighters raise me. So that's where all my competitive spirit comes from. And my mom, for some reason, always wants me to tell people that I have a black belt, and I always say no. So there's your shout out, mom, I got a black belt. Um, I want to thank my extended family, the Ogata family, the Coburn family, the Kiwana family, the Megs family, um, for always being there for me and supporting me um, throughout this whole entire time. The other thing is, is I want to thank all my teammates that I played with through high school when I was a little kid and in college. I learned so much from each and every one of you. The other thing going through this process is, is I found out I've got so many really cool friends, um, and I'm really lucky to have as many friends as I do. Um, so thank you to all of them. Also want to thank all the coaches that I played for. Coach Bill Walden, um, he really taught me how to play basketball. He passed away during the season this year, and um, I know he's smiling down on me right now. I, talk to, I, I, I can still hear him talking to me. Um, I'd like to thank my high school coach, Sam Dwayne, my college coaches, Cleet Adelman, Pat Conahan, and then um, another coach that uh, coached me my freshman year in college, Tony Ricketts, who passed away a week ago. And so I know that Coach Walden and Coach Ricketts are looking down on me right now and proud. Um, through this journey, I started coaching when I was 18 years old. And um, I want to thank all those players from Mesquite High School 
that trusted in me when I was 18 and they were 17 and 16 years old. I want to thank those guys. I want to thank their parents for putting me in the position I am now. I wouldn't be in this position if I never would have gotten started when I was 18 years old. I also want to thank my AU team, all the guys that played for me then on the Arizona Rage. I was 18, 19, 20 years old, loading guys in a 15 passenger van, driving down the highway to Vegas and LA, and we were just out there having fun, trying to get college scholarships. So I really appreciate all of you guys too. When I stopped at Corona Del Sol, it was my first opportunity and chance to be able to, to coach, coach at a school. And so I appreciate all those players as well. And uh, then I moved on to Phoenix College and I coached guys that were older than me. And um, I, I respect those guys to this day for uh, accepting coaching from a younger guy. And then um, I went to McClintock High School at 23 years old. Love to thank Kim Hilgers for hiring me as a 23 year old person. Um, we won a state championship in my third year. And that's the kind of thing I wanna keep moving towards. We need to win championships and that's what we're going to do. So I'd like to thank all the coaches that coach with me on the Arizona Rage and McClintock High School. I also want to thank um, Coach Mark Adams, who's now the coach at Texas Tech, who I coach for um, at Howard College. I'd love to thank all the players. I lived in the dorms with them, so I was around them 24-7, and there were some really cool guys, and a lot of them are still playing professionally and successful now. I'd like to thank all the coaches that I coached with at Howard College. And, um, and also a really big mentor to me, Earl Diddle. It was like a clinic every single day sitting in the Howard office learning from Coach Adams and Coach Diddle. Um, lastly, I'd like to thank um, Coach Peary and Coach Gavin. Coach Gavin gave me an opportunity and chance to come up to Portland State. And then Coach Peary gave me an opportunity and chance to uh, continue on at Portland State. I've been here for eight years, four with each of them. They're like brothers to me. And I, I really appreciate everything that I've learned and the opportunities that they've given me to be here today. Um, former Portland State players, it was awesome. The last two weeks was awesome. I got to hear from a lot of you guys, um, and it was awesome. The, the guys who played on the PK80 team, all your guys' support was unbelievable. And I want you guys all to know that I went out there and competed to get this job so you would have a place to come home to, and there wouldn't be some stranger over there standing on the sideline coaching. I wanted you to know that you could come home always. Another really important thing to me was I felt the weight of the world on my shoulders this, this past week. Um, and I talked to his mom earlier today, is I wanted Deontay Strickland's legacy to carry on through Portland State, and I wanted to make sure that that was going to happen. That's a really big thing for me. And I miss him, I know he's smiling, he's probably laughing at me right now. Um, you know, and I want to make sure that that legacy carries on for the, for the rest of my time here. To our current players, I can't tell you how much I appreciate your guys' support. Two up there, guys down here, I really appreciate your guys' support. It means the world to me. Understand that I believe in you, and I know that you believe in me, and it's my job to get you to where you want to go with your goals, whether it's team or individual. The whole reason I got into coaching at 18 years old, it obviously, it, it wasn't for money, it wasn't for self-gain. The whole reason I got into coaching was to help student athletes achieve their dreams. And I've never lost sight of that. And that's always something that I'm always gonna focus on is the student athletes. We need to understand that we're gonna earn everything. We will earn everything. Nothing is going to be given to us. But in the same process of earning everything, we're gonna have a lot of fun too. I wanna make sure that our players are always having fun. Everybody picked up a basketball when they were a little kid because it was orange, it bounced, and that's what you wanted to do. You didn't pick it up to get a college scholarship when you were five years old. You didn't pick it up to make money. You picked it up to have fun. And I wanna make sure we never lose sight of that. Um, some so that's all my thank yous. So, and I'm sure I miss some people. There's been a lot of positive people in my life. Um, some stuff about me and where I want this program to go. I, I think it's funny because like I've been here eight years and I've never hung anything on my walls in my office. I never have. People always come by and they say, man, you look like you, look like you just moved in here. Well, I never put anything on the walls 
because I was never satisfied. I always wanted to be a head coach. I always wanted to be the head coach at Portland State. And I knew one day, if somebody just gave me a chance and opportunity, I could prove that I didn't have to take anything off my walls. So now that I have that chance and opportunity, I'm going to hang stuff on the walls. I'm going to hang former players on the walls. Because without them, I wouldn't be here. The other thing is, is I'm hungry and passionate. I don't eat breakfast in the morning so I can come to work hungry. So when I get to lunch, I'm hungry. And that's just the kind of person I am. I know my 2003 Chevy Tahoe's got a lot of play this week so far, but like, it doesn't have AC and it doesn't have heat. And the reason I do that is so I can practice my mental toughness during the winter when it's cold and I can practice my mental toughness during the, the summer when it's hot. That's the type of person I am. Um, I feel like I got it from the mud. I, I came up here, and I wasn't going to tell this story, and I'll just go through it real quick. But I came up here with a twin mattress, two bags of clothes, and a small TV. I laid the twin mattress on the floor, and that's where I slept. I laid the TV on the ground. I had one plate, one cup, one fork, one knife. I ate pasta every single night. And I ate on the ground like a dog. And that's just what I did. So I got it out of the mud. Like, that's who I am as a person. I know how to work for things. I know how to make this team successful. Um, some things about me, like I just said, I'm passionate, I'm spirited, I'm intense, I'm tough, and I want that to reflect in how we play on this floor. Those are things I'm not willing to compromise. Those are things when you show up to a game, I want you to see out of our team. Another thing about me is, is like a lot of things this week have been said about me being a natural born leader. And that's exactly what I am. When I was a little kid watching my dad teach people in the dojo, I learned everything from him. I learned how to be a leader. I grew up from three years old on when I could comprehend things. I knew how to be a leader. And it's my job to motivate people. It's my job to motivate them. It's my job to inspire people here. I know that that's my job. And these guys will tell you, I got some pretty good pregame speeches. They wanted to hear one today, but I don't got one today. So I'm going to save those for the games. And understand, with our team, I'm going to steal a quote from Bruce Arians, one of my favorite coaches to, to uh, see and, and hear talk. Coach them hard and hug them later. I'm going to coach you guys. I'm going to push you. But we'll have a great relationship after that. I want to be the type of coach that players want to play for. I want to be the type of coach that fans want to cheer for. I want to be the type of coach where players will run through a wall for you because they know at the end of the day, I'm going to run through a wall for them. And that's how it is. I want the city of Portland, I want everybody here to come and compete with us. That's the atmosphere I want. I want you to show up and have fun. Heck, drink a beer, whatever. Have fun. We'll come out here and compete. We'll get it done together. This isn't about me. This isn't about just one individual player. This is about a community coming together and competing as one. So at the end of a season, I want to look at people's eyes and see if they're crying. Because when we win the championship, I want to see people are so happy that they're crying. And if we don't win the championship, I want to see you cry to know that this team gave every possible ounce of everything that they had, and they tried to earn it. And you're so disappointed for them that you cry as well. Lastly, my dream started when I was a little kid. A lot of kids, when they grow up, play with action figures, G.I. Joes, and whatever, trucks, and all that kind of thing. When I was a young boy, I remember playing with basketball cards. How do you play with basketball cards? Well, I'll tell you. You arrange them into different lineups. You arrange them into positions. You start remembering all the stats, the heights, the weights. That's what I did. I was like GMing NBA teams when I was five years old. I used to read the newspaper at the time to look at box scores. This has always been my dream, to be a head coach. And since I've been here over eight years, I figured out that I didn't want to just be a head coach. I wanted to be the head coach at Portland State. That's what I wanted to do. This is my home. This feels like home to me. Heck, I even feel like I went to school here. And 
I have more pride in this school than any possible person. And if you want to compete about it, I will compete with you to show you how much pride I have in Portland State. So I know that I'm the right man for the job, and we're going to get it done. And we're going to have a heck of a lot of fun in the process. These guys are going to reach their goals off the floor, on the floor. We'll figure it out. This microphone's competing with me right now. But we'll figure it out. And we're going to have fun doing it. So I hope to see you all here when it opens. If it opens, if it doesn't, then cheer us on from the live streams or whatever. But we're going to have fun. And it's going to be a great time. The only other thing I have to say is Strict City forever. And we're never going to forget that. Thank you. That was the intensity we saw in the interview, and too, in case anyone was wondering how we got to this point. Um, I want to open it up for questions. Come on down, Senator Court Mike. So I haven't had the opportunity to talk about it with these guys yet. For me, there's some non-negotiables. I want guys who are going to be tough. I want guys who are going to hate to lose. I want guys who are going to be self-disciplined. Um, I want guys who have leadership qualities. And I want guys who love the game when we're talking about basketball. Off the floor, it's really important to me that you're self-disciplined. You're self-disciplined to take care of your schoolwork, to be a great member of the community, to reach out into other teams and get to know them, to show up to a softball game, to show up to a soccer game, and not just sitting there on our phones playing around. I want those types of people who are going to be connected to Portland State Athletics. I want those guys who are going to be connected to the city. That's the type of players I'm looking for. The rest of the basketball stuff, I can figure that out. But when it comes to those things, we got to have those things because that formulates a winner. And I want to have winners on this team. The other thing, too, I'll say, sorry. The other thing, too, I'll say is um, I love Oregon. I've been here eight years, and there needs to be a fence up around Oregon. Um, you know, I love Washington. Obviously, I love Arizona. I love California. And um, if guys have the opportunity to play and do those things and homegrown guys um, have a connection to Portland State where their families and their friends can come, then absolutely, we need to protect it. All right. Well, if there's no further questions at this point, help me welcome and congratulate our next head men's basketball coach, Jace Coburn. All right, everyone. Well, I'm hoping that you, too, were able to see the qualities that, that we saw as a committee our members of our community that we saw in Coach Greg and Coach Coburn. As the athletic director here at Portland State University, I, I can't even explain to you how excited I am, not only for them as just people, parents, young professionals. You're still young, I'm still gonna, because if I call you young, that means I'm still young. Like, right, we're all in this together. But the future is so bright. To have the opportunity to have a new era of both men's and women's basketball at the same time here in the Viking Pavilion on these beautiful sunny park blocks is a chance that we've never had before. 
So I'm really excited to see what the community brings to support Coach Coburn and Coach Greg as they begin to build their programs here. And I look forward to welcome you back to the Park Blocks this winter. So with that, go Vikes!